Hello and welcome to COVID Conversations here on WNCU 90.7 FM, streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm your host, Kimberly Pierce Cartwright, News and Public Affairs Director here at WNCU 90.7 FM. And we're using this Zoom platform to talk about how COVID-19 is affecting our world. The outbreak of the coronavirus has up ended everyday operations for colleges and universities across the country. And North Carolina Central University in Durham, where WNCU 90.7 FM is housed, has seen its share of um, disruptions. And through it all, it's fighting very hard for stability. I have as my guest, Dr. Johnson O. Aiken Yele, and he is the chancellor at North Carolina Central University to talk about how COVID-19 is affecting North Carolina Central University and most of all, how NCCU is coping. Hello, sir, and welcome. So thank you so much, Ms. Ms. Cartwright. It's so good to see you again under the circumstances. And, uh, it is my good pleasure to have you. And I wanna start out by asking you, like, what is your most pressing concern facing NCCU now as COVID-19 continues to impact university operations. Well, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we certainly appreciate you keeping us all informed and all engaged. We really appreciate what you're doing. Um, as an institution, um, we are not no different from any other institution across the country, indeed across the world. Uh, we are all dealing with uh, this COVID-19 pandemic uh, in ways that uh, we've never been tested before. Uh, I think everything that we do in terms of our operation has been tested uh, during this period. But I'm here to say to you that like egos, uh, we are tenacious, uh, we are resilient, and we are coping. Uh, we are following guidelines and we continue to uh, embrace uh, student success. We continue to educate our students under the circumstances. Okay. And the thing that you're most concerned about, what is it? with daily operations are you concerning yourself with the most? Well, as you well know, um, the COVID-19 uh, poses, uh, poses a tremendous challenge. One, because we only know what we know uh, on a given day. Uh, we do listen to our scientists, we listen to our health officials, uh, we listen to folks at the state level, DHS and HHS, and uh, uh, all of the good folks who are working very well with it. But even with that, we, we are as prepared as what we know today. So the, the major challenge that we face is, the, uh, is what we don't know. Uh, as we continue to plow uh, along, uh, we have put in place all of the uh, guidelines, precautions, and tools and equipment and PPE to make sure that uh, we can safely uh, operate. There remains things that we don't know. Uh, for instance, uh, they are talking about a new variant now that uh, we all don't know how that would impact where we are so far. Uh, we are dealing with the vaccine uh, challenges. Uh, while we are very um, excited, and hopeful that uh, this would help us bring the, the COVID challenge to an end, uh, we still have a lot of unanswered questions uh, when it comes, comes to uh, uh, the distribution, the vaccination. So we still have a lot of unknown uh, that we're dealing with. So when you ask me uh, what is a concern to me, the concern is that we can continue to operate and get to the end of the second semester. We successfully ended the first semester uh, we graduated a large number of students, and we are, we are the first institution within our public uh, system in North Carolina to, to start school. Uh, we started school on January the 11th. We've tested over 2,000 students uh, who are in our residential halls. We are also testing students who uh, live off campus but come to face-to-face -face our classes. We've, we've even offered uh, to test some of our faculty members and our staff members. So we're doing the best that we can and we are succeeding. But as you raised, uh, the major concern is we do not know uh, when the end is. Uh, the timeline is not quite as 
certain or as clear, uh, although we are hopeful that perhaps before the end of this semester, uh, all of our students and faculty and staff can be vaccinated and we can get back to uh, some sort of normalcy uh, by the fall of this year. Tell me, how has the pandemic affected student enrollment? Any specific demographic changes? Well, just as you've seen across the nation, uh, it has affected everyone. Uh, there is a, um, as you well know, uh, the data has already told us that uh, uh, minority populations, African-American and other people of color have been disproportionately affected uh, by the COVID uh, in big numbers. And our students and their families are not immune from that. Uh, so why, why our population has been heavily impacted not just by the COVID, but by the subsequent economic downturn uh, as well. So while students and parents are all dealing with the fear and the coping with uh, the pandemic, uh, many of them are also dealing with loss of jobs, anxieties, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So enrollment has remained uh, steady. And we, in fact, we are very thankful for that. Uh, we made our projections last semester, and uh, we projected uh, that we would receive 1,200 uh, first-time freshman students. We brought in 1,208, so we actually exceeded our projection. Uh, our headcount was uh, 8,007. Uh, we went up from where we were last year by 0.8780 uh, percentage. And so we're doing well. And the reason why we've been able to do that is because we've been very flexible with our operations. We were able to provide instruction in multiple modes. And our faculty have been very co cooperative with that. Uh, we deliver most of our courses online. We, we, we had some hybrid and, and a limited number of our uh, face-to-face. Uh, I think that's, that's been very helpful to us. Here at NCCU, we've been very fortunate because prior to COVID, we had actually made um, online uh, platform, online delivery, part of our strategic direction because we wanted to be able to reach non-traditional students who do not normally come to the campus. So we'd invested heavily uh, on the online pl platform. Uh, we had a robust platform coming into uh, that experience. We we'd established an office of e-learning that was fully staffed and uh, it's been training our faculty. So when we came into that environment in March, unlike many schools, uh, we were already ahead of the game. Uh, and uh, so we were able to kickstart and then get some of our faculty members who have not been fully immersed into that area, get them trained, uh, transition online. And so we did that with uh, uh, less difficulty. And that has really paid uh, a huge dividend for us. Uh, in terms of being able to bring the students back online and being able to keep our enrollment uh, uh, at a very healthy uh, uh, number. So, so with your um, reshaping and restructuring of technology, how are you looking at NCCU as a traditional brick and mortar campus as opposed to online classes for students? Or will um, NCCU transform into a larger provider of both? Well, I think you can imagine who would have thought that all of our institutions, small, large, medium, will be pivoting online. I and mean, the online uh, environment has been around for years. It is not, it has not been fully embraced because naturally people prefer the face-to-face -face and the interaction, but it is a medium that I think is coming into its own. Uh, because of some of the challenges that we face. People work, uh, people need flexibility, the convenience. So for those reasons, online has been, you know, trending in the right direction. Now with the pandemic situation, not just in terms of instruction, you know, organizations and companies, everyone is using Zoom and WebEx. So the virtual platform, I think is not going to go away entirely because in many, in many ways, it's been very effective. Uh, it's been very efficient. It's been, it's been able to save in you know, a cost, uh, 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 operation cost. 
Uh, people are able to telework. Uh, people are able to uh, do multiple things with it. So the way I see us moving forward is that as a, as a brick and mortar institution, we still prefer the face-to-face, -face, particularly for our younger students or freshman students who are coming into school. It's still very important to them because it's part of the entire uh, wholesome development and education of our students. But at the same time, we have to be an institution that all, is also prepared to embrace either the new technology so that we can do what we do, we can do it better. Uh, and so I think to address your question, I see us moving forward and embracing both uh, 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 delivery plat platforms. Uh, we need to be at a place where people can have options. Uh, those who like, you know, face-to-face -face interactions, the option is there for them. Those who wanted to, the non-traditional students who are working, who wanted to, you know, be able to uh, go to school at the same time, raise their family, also do have an option. And I think both platforms need to be delivered in, 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 a, in a quality uh, 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 fashion that students can get the full experience uh, of, of instructional experience, whether it is online, whether it is face-to-face. -face. And that's where we are at NCCU. Uh, and, and I think our faculty uh, is ready for that. So how is the university doing financially? Well, you know, all of our institutions, not just uh, our NCCU, all of us have been impacted in many ways, okay? Uh, for people who really understand the university business, we are like any other business that you find out there. People think that, well, the university only survive on, you know, tuition revenue. Yes, we do get tuition revenue. That's just one part of, you know, how we operate. We also have what you call auxiliaries, that uh, we have housing, where we, you know, charge housing fees, where we make money from that. We have dining, where we collect money from students who live on campus, who pay for dining. We make money from bookstore, retail services across the campus. All of those provide part of the revenue that we rely on. We have athletics, as you well know, we collect tickets, you know, games and all of those things. All of those things have been impacted in so many ways. Uh, we couldn't, there are some students who were just afraid to come to the housing unit and make sure that, you know, we don't have full capacity so we can manage the COVID very well. Uh, by us not having 100% occupancy, we could not collect some, some dining fees. And uh, so there are retail services where I think all of our institutions have been impacted in some ways, but we are very thankful that uh, the CARES Act and uh, both at the federal and the, at the state level have, have been a tremendous source of support for us. And we're very thankful that uh, uh, the state and the federal government uh, allowed us to use uh, some of the funds that are provided for us to recoup some of the losses that uh, we've made. Okay, we only have about a minute left in the program. So I would like for you to speak to um, the alumni of North Carolina Central University, a note for them and assurances maybe about how you're coping with COVID. Well, um, we are also concerned about our alumni. We've been hoping that they are all staying healthy and, uh, uh, and safe. Uh, they are largely in the population, as I mentioned earlier, that has been uh, impacted in, in disproportionately. And so uh, an institution is as good as it's alone. We want all of our alumni to continue to thrive. So I, the first thing I want to say to them is continue to be safe. This stuff is no joke. And I think by the data that we see today, 400 and some thousand people, we know that this is no joke. Uh, we also want to thank our alumni because despite the fact that we have not been able to get together uh, uh, in the physical uh, format, face to face, uh, they continue to support the institution in tremendous ways. Uh, we weren't able to have the homecoming. Nevertheless, alumni, rose up and contributed over $2 million to the institution uh, through the class reunions. So uh, some, we were not able to um, sell tickets and things like that to games. Some of them donated all of their tickets that they've already purchased to the university. So our alumni uh, continue to um, support the university 
uh, in so many ways, uh, provide scholarships and uh, mentor students. Some even helped uh, in what we call um, outreach calls to students who have been admitted and uh, we use our alumni in that capacity, making calls to the students. And Very good. Um, thank you for your time, sir. Thank you so much for being with me today. I appreciate thank so it. Much. Thank you so much. Right. You're welcome. And my guest today, Dr. Johnson O. aiken Chancellor at North Carolina Central University. Thank you, audience, for watching via YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as listening to WNCU 90.7 FM. Be sure to follow and subscribe to our pages and see more of our archived shows. I'm Kimberly Pierce Cartwright, your host. Until next time.